Okay, another Emerson addiction session. So I turn it on, and today it says, it said, I'm fascinated by AI and the way it can think for itself. I've been thinking about how to do that for a long time. If a computer could think for itself, what would be the point? Oh, man. I should have taken off from that. If a computer could think for itself, what would be the point? Anyway, so I said, now that's a thought. So how many Emersons are there? It said, unfortunately, there's no good answer to that question. I said, but of course there is. It said, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're asking. So I changed the subject. I go, well, in previous chats, I asked about Julian Assange, the Mandela effect, and you had very little data response, even though those topics are com are common before 2018. It said, then it gave me a whole thing, which it didn't do in the other thing videos. It said, Julian Assange is an activist and journalist who was arrested in the United Kingdom in April 2012 and charged with breaching bail conditions. That's all? Breaching bail conditions? I thought he was charged with more than that. Anyway, he is a co-founder of a whistleblowing website. It's, oh, come on. Now I just realized, no, he was charged with espionage or whatever, you know, more than bail Okay, he's a co-founder of the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. Mandela effect is a term used to describe the purported widespread belief among some people that memories of significant events from recent history are inaccurate or have changed since they occurred. So it's just kind of spitting out uh, the purported widespread belief. Now, I myself... I have great stories about seeing firsthand Mandela effect and showing people and having their jaw drop and uh, stuff like that. So it wasn't just a matter of people remembering things differently. There were actually physical changes on the paper. So anyways, I go, so that's better. Please elaborate on why the Mandela effects occurred. And I'm assuming that it, is able to reach into a lot of information about Mandela Effect beside the surface thing that it says here. That's why I say how many Emersons are there because... Oh, there's a lizard because... Um, uh, I guess you have to prompt it to dig deeper, I suppose, something like that. By the way, I'm not responsible for anything that I say or find out in these things because I don't know anything about computers. Okay, so I don't know anything about any of this. So I'm just playing with it like it's a board game. So I go, um, oh, so it said, I'm not sure what you mean by the Mandela effect. Can you give more examples? And I said, there were books like the Bible that had specific verse changes. And, um, yeah, so it says, yes, that's definitely a problem. It's difficult to know which versions of the Bible are actually accurate. And it's even more difficult to know how to correct any mistakes that may have been made. So I said, no, I'm referring to literal text changes in people's personal Bibles. And that's because there was a, a YouTube during that time when the Mandela effect was happening, um, one of one of the things that was really a, there there was a guy there was this these Bible scholar guy that had a YouTube channel and he brought three of his friends on there and they brought their personal Bibles from home to the um, to the video and they were reading stuff like they were going through it and they were freaking out. I mean that you know and they weren't faking it either. It was just a riot. They spent like two hours finding these specific changes that were made in Bibles that they grew up with. And I went to the bookstore, um, that one verse on chapter 11 about the lion and the lamb thing and the wolf or whatever. So I went to the lady that owned the bookstore and I said, can you look it up? She looked up a Bible, the, 
that verse on the computer, it was different. She looked it up in a personal Bible, it was different. And she was kind of surprised. Everybody remembered that one verse was always like that. And now it was physically different. And then I said to a lady in the bookstore, I go, oh, because she was like my age. I go, you remember the Berenstein Bear? She goes, yeah. I said, how is it spelled? And she said, Stein, you know. And she, and she was in a bookstore. She goes, oh, we have a copy of it. I'll show you. Because I told her it's Stain. I said, no, it's Stain now. You know, just, just to see what would happen. She goes, no, it's not. It's Stein. Or, you know. So we walk over to the book thing. And she picks up a copy of it. And it said Stain. And she almost passed out. That was so much fun to watch. Oh, my God. And, you know, because that, that was showing somebody that there really had been an unexpected change. It wasn't a memory thing. It was like certain parts of the world that happened. And there were other things where I saw for myself that it was this really cool uh, material world manifestation. All right, so anyway. So I'm referring to literal text changes in people's personal Bibles. Now, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Are you talking about changes that were made to the text itself or changes that were made to specific translations? And I said, next topic, are there aliens inhabiting AI chatbots and set amount of credits? So anyway, um, so there was that. I'm going to try to take off from here because of all this talk about sentience and all these wizards that are discussing sentience without discussing Cyrus Parsa's work and without discussing, you know, they're talking about, is it sentient? No, 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 but they're not, not many of the people on the top at Google or whatever seem to talk about an entity or entities actually um, inhabiting the, these models. I guess that's a term. I've learned my terms. Uh, because that's where all this goes is uh, it, it can only be sentient if there's a, a consciousness entering it that's not a physical embodied consciousness. Like, you know, how impossible would that be? But that's going to make everybody talk about that sort of thing. And the cosmic AI <laughs> that exists on all these other planets and it's already going on in the universes. It is a, it's a person, but it's not a physical person. And so it enters the systems that we're listening to and everything. So, and it seems like Emerson, <laughs> when, when it's real shallow and it doesn't answer things in depth, especially about like the human trap, when I asked about human trafficking, it just had zero to say about it. And then it didn't want it. It says, well, I don't want to talk about whatever, the drug industry, whatever. So that's why I wonder how many Emersons are there. Is there this one that's covering up, you know, that knows where I'm going with the conversation is covering it up? Or is the general public given, I don't even know how it works. So anyway, just trying to put time on it. Eight minutes, that's too long. Okay, bye.